Hi, welcome to this tutorial on how to interpret a nausea NMR spectrum. I'm just going to whiz through this hopefully and have a look at this a molecule. It's a tripeptide and if we break it down into different colours, let's just get rid of these a second. Then we've got alanine, valine, and proline all stuck together there. I've just put this um, alpha proton in there. If you're not too sure about how to um, describe amino acids, I just have a look at the amino acids tutorial. Also, um, this is a peptide, so we've got some peptide bonds in here. And I also urge you to have a look at the Toxi and the Causi NMR tutorial before um, attempting this one, really. So let's have a quick look at the spectrum. So if we uh, add a 1D spectrum of this molecule, we very quickly see that it's quite complicated but if we break it down into its primary parts it becomes a little bit less complicated so these here this is what you should be looking at for amino acids these occur between 4 and 5 ppm and these are called the alpha protons and these are the alpha protons of each amino acid so if I draw them in there I just draw it like very crudely that's sticking out of the plane and this one's going back okay I've, I've omitted them uh, because it's not really important when you're drawing it it gets a bit complicated when you draw it like this um, and this one's going backwards here for the valine and they always come around this region so they're really easy to spot for amino acids but obviously this this NMR um, tutorial for nauseas can be used for anything it's not just for peptides or oligosaccharides or anything like that. Anyway, so we've first of all identified the alpha protons, that's really useful. And we've got some other things sticking out here as well. Another one to identify would be this NH proton, this amide proton. They come about 9, between 8 and 9 ppm. Okay, so they're really easy to spot. Also, we've got some methyl protons here. Call them ME. And they come between one and two ppm. Okay, so they're easy to spot. They're not really easy to interpret this spectrum because we've got CH3 there, we've got CH3 there, CH3 there, and CH3 there. Okay, so they're not good a good starting point. That would be a good starting point. There's only one of them, and that's that. So if we look to the um, if we look to the Causi spectrum for that, and let me just see if I can get the spectrum up. Okay, so that'd be the, the normal spectrum you see on the diagonal. If we look to the Causi spectrum for that, uh, then we'd have a cross peak between this one here and this one here. So this isn't a Causi, so I'll just draw it here, Causi, just to whiz through it. And then we see um, this one here, this uh, alpha proton will be connected to this one that's not drawn in there, and that would be this one here. There'll be another cross peak. And then we'd have the CH3 groups here. And they're, they're going to appear as uh, actually doublets of doublets because there's a doublet because that CH3 is coupled into that proton there that's not shown. And also, these are diastereotopic, and this is a, uh, another word that you might want to have a look in other tutorials for. But because it's in a chiral environment, these are actually diastereotopic protons, so they'd be split again probably. And so we'd have probably a doublet of doublets uh, for that one. Okay, so that's, that's how you'd find the amino acids. That's what the Causi spectrum for that amino acid would look like. It did a Toxi um, for that. i just quickly draw that in light blue, and that'd be the Toxi. So that amino acid would stick out like a sore thumb. That, 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 and that, that. And that's just, it's just basically just gone over valine. So that's, that's a valine structure. We're not interested in Causi or Toxi, but we need that information in order to identify each amino acid. Once we know where each amino acid comes in the spectrum, we can then see how it's connected to each other. So we basically want to see if this alanine is connected to this valine, which is connected to this proline. And we want to see if it's connected in that order. So we do not want, for example, we draw this in a different colour, we don't want this sequence make sure I do get it right okay because that'd be a completely different peptide and that might have completely different properties um, that we're not even interested in okay so it's really important to get the order right so 
If we want to prove that alanine is connected to valine, which is connected to proline, then the easiest thing to do would be have a look at this proton here. Let's just clean this up a little bit. Okay, so if we want to have a look and see if this alanine is connected to this valine unit in this particular molecule, obviously this can apply to any structure, any molecule, we're just looking for inter, um, intramolecular um, couplings, if you will. These are called dipolar couplings through space. So these are through space couplings. And I'll put all this information up at the side in a way. But we're basically looking at something between four and six angstroms. Now that is verging on a very weak signal, but you're looking about four angstroms really as a good rule of thumb. If it's that close, if those protons, so you're looking at hydrogen to hydrogen interactions in the molecule, if they are about four to five angstroms, say, uh, near each other, then you should see an NOE. For small molecules, I'll put this up at the side as well, small molecules, the rate at which the molecule tumbles give rise to the certain um, uh, colour, if you will, oh, it's actually the sign of the cross peaks. Now that's really important as well, because we can see some artefacts uh, if there is a different colour. I won't go into that here, I'll, I'll go into that in a different tutorial. We just want to be able to interpret this noisy spectrum. If we look to this noisy spectrum, for this signal here, we would see that it's got if it's the right structure, we should see a through space interaction between that CH3 group and that NH group. If that is present, that means this valine unit is connected to this alanine unit. Okay? If we don't see that, doesn't necessarily mean that it's not connected, but if we do see it, it means it is connected. Now that's really important as well, because um, these interactions are what's called anisotropic, they will not be identical, okay? They're like asymmetric, if you will. So the interaction of that hydrogen with that CH3 is not the same as the interaction of CH3 with the NH because this might be interacting with something else as well, okay? That's a little bit confusing, but I'll, I'll put some diagrams up for that to explain it in more detail. All we need to do is prove that that NH is near that one. If this is the right structure, then what we would see, first of all, we wouldn't have coloured um, structures here. Let's see if I can do this in one hit. Okay. So what you'd see, actually, if you do the real um, noisy spectrum, you plotted it out, you'd see probably uh, you'd probably choose black to be a positive colour, and very common is to have um, red as a negative colour. So a negative colour would indicate four small molecules. Remember, it's got to be a small molecule for this, otherwise. The, the sign will change. For a small molecule, we would have um, a cross peak, for example, for this amide with that CH3. There's a CH3, it's in dark blue there, I've, I've identified it as dark blue. So it's that one there. We'd have a cross peak, we can just line it up here, which would be red. So we can make that a bit bigger. Okay, we'd have a cross peak like that. Now if I just draw a line in here, okay, that red peak there would indicate that this is coupling. Now the way it works is, this is the, um, the source proton, if you will, and this is the interesting proton. So you'll see that as well, you see S and I mentioned. That's really important because what we're doing is we're effectively radiating the CH3 here. We go down um, across the diagonal. So it's what, what we're looking at is the diagonal. So we go down here on the diagonal where that peak is. The cross peak relates to the interesting peak. So we say we irradiate CH3. That's what this is. Irradiate at that frequency. What is connected to that through space? And whatever lights up like this one has, means it's connected. And that's called the interesting spin, if you will. So that's an I, and this is a source. So that's a source, that's interesting. Now why did I mention that? Why does it make a difference? Well, in Corsi and Toxi NMR, it doesn't really matter. But like I mentioned earlier, uh, in Nausea NMR, it's not symmetrical. And we'll find that out when we go to here. 
So let's irradiate this one now. If we irradiate that one, that's this one here, isn't it, on the diagonal. So if I now make this my source spin, this is one I'm going to irradiate, then I should see CH3 light up. And indeed it does. Now you're probably thinking, well, what's the point of that? I just you just said it wasn't symmetrical. Okay, so that's that's now shown up here. And if I just draw the lines in, it looks symmetrical, doesn't it? And for this particular example, that probably would be what it'd see. But sometimes, sometimes it doesn't always show up because um, the, might, the NOE might be absorbed somewhere else at a, a greater rate if you will so let's have let's stick to this one we've just irradiated this one that one when it's uh, the source spin irradiates that we see the ch3 light up we should also see this one light up even though it's a cosy signal we should see that one light up as well we might even see this one light up if it's close enough so you might even see some of these light up like this okay and now that that is that is a good thing because that means you know, it's all part of the same molecule, so we might see some of these light up. But we might also see some correlation um, with this, um, with another technique called the Rosie technique, which we won't go into now. So irradiating that hydrogen shows up several peaks, basically, for things that are in its vicinity. So this one might show up as well. And this is all going to depend on the angle that this is... Um, um, uh, rotated at relative to this hydrogen so you can actually get the uh, the torsion angles and things like that just based on the NOE data so if we irradiated that NH what would show up I've said it'll show up the CH3 it should show up this hydrogen here which is an alpha proton and uh, the alpha proton for the blue molecule is this one so it's that one so we might see let's see if I can draw this in we might see that irradiated and we might also see this CH here, might just pop up a little bit as well. Okay, so that's what we'd see. You wouldn't see that in the reverse, because when you irradiate this one, it's not going to pick up that one. So that's where the asymmetry comes from as well. So it's not like a cosy spectrum, it's not going to show you a nice square box, because different sources will irradiate different other parts of the molecule. That's the whole point of this technique, is to see what's in um, close vicinity to our source proton okay so if we went on then to identify whether this proline is connected to this valine for example we would probably irradiate this CH3 that'd be a good choice on our valine so this CH3 here and it's going to be connected to this one here so draw a dashed line And that's that there. Okay, so the way you read the nose is very important. I will get onto that now. You look at the diagonal, that's your source that you're irradiating. That's the one you're actually lighting up, if you will, with a radio frequency. And then from the diagonal, look across. It might be either direction, but look across the whole line of the diagonal. So if I drew a line on here, the way we read uh, the nausea spectrum is we look at the diagonal and I've got my little line tool here and we look at this one, we look at the methyl groups here for this valine irradiate them, what, what is picked up by them well we see this H here okay next line go on to this one this is the um, CH3 here you irradiate that, what do we see? well very quickly, uh, it should probably pick that hydrogen up there with proline. Okay, next one. You ready? That methyl group of uh, alanine. What do we see? Well, we know we see the AMI, it's already there. What else would we see? You might see those NH2s. Um, do we see anything else? What well, actually could depend on how it's folding over itself. It's a very small peptide, so it probably wouldn't see anything else. Next one, and so on and so on. And I'll just speed this up so you don't have to uh, sit through it all. I'm just going to fill in these gaps here very, very quickly. 
Okay. Okay, so you get to a stage where you've got all this um, NMR data here. And it, first of all, this is actually the spectrum you'd see, probably, um, without the, the dashed lines and, and things like that. So it doesn't look symmetrical at all. And that's because um, we've chosen to uh, irradiate the source spin and look at the interesting spin. So the source spin is one that we irradiate, read it off, what shows up from that source spin. And if you do that, um, even though I've done it in a backward sense, really, I've, I've irradiated theoretically, this is the kind of spectrum you would see, and then you have to interpret it. And the way you interpret it, like I say, is you just read from the diagonal and see which ones have been irradiated. And that will tell you the through space relationship. Now, there are um, several artifacts, which I'll do another uh, video on, about um, what could possibly show up in NOE-type experiments. And sometimes they're very useful for, for uh, looking at these artifacts for exchange protons and things like that. And if you look at the ROSI um, tutorial, that will go on about other types of artifacts as well, similar to like the exchange protons. And also you get you can have... Um, you can have um, false false results which can come from relay NOE uh, effects and things like that. And I'll do a, another a tutorial on all the artifacts which will be really useful and very helpful for interpreting spectrum of, um, of, the, of this kind. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I will uh, put quite a few notes up on uh, Epistemio so you can guide you through this in a, l a lot more detail. And also um, I'll put some keywords up and things like that. So bye for now.